the other question that arises and i think this now maybe starts to bring we'll, we'll start to bring a couple of your books into this conversation which is the rise of two new players right which did not exist necessarily in the 1920s and and 30s but uh, as you've argued i think in your books as well have become increasingly powerful players in 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 this capital game which is the venture capital industry and the hedge fund industry so talk to us about how you feel maybe starting with the hedge fund industry first how you feel the hedge fund industry has changed the rules of the game in a way or has maybe even threatened to dislodge maybe some of the existing powerful players in this game well i think as the traditional banks have been increasingly regulated um small institutions and hedge funds are in relative terms small on the whole <laughs> small uh, maybe in terms of number of employees but not small in terms of the capital that they spend well on. but i mean compared to big banks um right. they are They're just uh, they are they are quite small um uh, it, my point about smallness has become less true over time they've grown and grown and grown in my history of hedge funds i describe how it was a huge deal when you had 1 billion dollars under management uh the first hedge fund to do that was in the early 1990s and now of course you know 25 billion is modest and there are many which have 250 billion so you're right it's grown but compared to the assets at you know city bank or jp morgan it's nothing um and and because they are you know too big to fail is a famous catchphrase explaining why you have to regulate big banks hedge funds in relative terms are small enough to fail you can let them fail it will not create the whole economy and because of that it's okay to let them you know do what they want a bit more because it will not have such huge wide social effects if they go wrong uh, and i think that allows hedge funds to innovate uh, in trading methodology um and so a lot of the price discovery that goes on in public markets where somebody's really doing the research to think about whether this stock should be more valuable than the other stock you know which is the better company is it you know ford or is it tesla or is it general motors or is it you know which one yeah. and 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 the people who are incentivized to really do careful research about that are hedge funds because if they get it right the hedge fund managers will personally get extremely wealthy and that is not really the true same thing with with, with banks Yeah and what about the venture capital industry uh, of course your most recent book the power law talks about the you know I'll let you explain it uh the power law itself and how that in many ways is a very different way of coming at it um than the hedge fund industry Yeah so in most kinds of finance the um you know if you look at the returns on a given uh, stock in the stock market um they're going to fluctuate up and down but on nearly every day you know the fluctuations will be contained to 3% either way um and if you were to plot all the fluctuations from all the days you would see this big cluster where it kind of clusters around zero <laughs> and you know sort of either side of of that zero mark 3% up or 3% down accounts for 2/3 or something of, of all the all the, all the observations whereas in venture capital um you know a venture capitalist goes out invests in let's say uh, you know 20 startups and it would be perfectly normal for 15 of those startups to basically go to zero no returns at all 100% loss and then you know a couple will go sideways and if all is good you know three will hit the jackpot be right off in that right hand tail where it's not 3% up it's sort of you know 300% up i mean it's 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 a very very big increase um uh in fact no sorry 300 that's wrong so 10x would be the would be the minimum so 3000x i should have said yeah 3000x um so that that's a proper you know uh venture capital home run and so when you look at hedge fund managers i'm sorry when you look at venture capital managers investments they look a little bit like somebody in a casino you know goes zero 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 jackpot zero 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 jackpot so it looks like luck but it's not luck it's about intelligently taking a bunch of bets that have a positive expected return because although inevitably with startups 
most of them are going to fail, you have a good shot at getting those three out of 20 um, that really make it big time. And do you feel that there was a reason why these two, at least in particular, forms of capital deployment didn't end up being subsumed within the larger banks? Because if you look at the large banks, like the ones we've been talking about, uh, often they'll have multiple divisions, they'll have multiple small teams, they'll have the special situations groups and strategic opportunity groups. Why is it that these two particular forms of capital deployment in particular have ended up being often these small teams uh, and outside of the context of the large banks? I think it's about incentive structures. Um, you know, trading and investment is, you know, a high stress occupation. If you do it well, you have to be really, really focused on it. And the difference in terms of your returns between being sort of a normal, intelligent person who does a reasonably good job, which because you're up against in the financial markets, lots of other people who fit the same description probably won't make you any return. And then on the other hand, being somebody who's right off in the right hand tail of the distribution, who is just completely focused and totally aggressive about it. Um, you know, those are the people that are going to make, you know, serious returns because they're going to be that bit better than, you know, the bulk of the very smart people who are trying to do this. Uh, and so it's all about these high powered incentives to get that high powered performance. And if you think about a hedge fund on the downside, the hedge fund manager who does badly will lose his own money because typically he does have his own capital, his own savings in the fund. And so there's a big incentive on the downside not to mess it up. And on the upside, he's going to keep 20% of the profits from the investment. And that's a chance to get seriously, seriously rich. Uh, if he does the extra research it's going to take to make the right investment call. Um, and if you're inside a bank, there's always this feeling that, you know, if you do badly, it's OK. Some other part of the bank will absorb your losses. And if you do well, yeah, you'll get a bonus, but it won't be that you get 100 percent of what you might have deserved in your own mind. Uh, so I just think that, you know, and it's the same with venture capital, by the way. There are lots of attempts by corporations to create corporate venture capital operations. And the people who work at those have less high powered incentives and they tend to do less well. Absolutely.